Today I want to talk about one of the most common things we train our dogs to do and that is to sit. A real simple command, but what's really important is the meaning behind sit. Why do we ask our dogs to sit? It's not important that we, that our dogs will sit because we know they're going to sit no matter what. Goofy, come here. Hop up here. Sit. But the fact that I can redirect my dog from doing something else and put him in a proactive command like sit is important. It's something that can save their lives. It's something that can have them focus on obedience. It's something that we want to tell them to do as opposed to tell them not to do something. So if my dog starts running around and I say no, 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 it's a negative command because the dog doesn't have a command. Instead I say, Goofy, sit. And he sits. So in this video I want to talk about the different ways dogs sit, how to get them to sit, how to get a proper sit, and why all these things are so important. But if you like this video, most importantly, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel because there's a lot more videos like this where these are coming from. And I'm happy to share my dog training uh, passion with you. I hope you like the videos. I hope you have the greatest time training your dog because it should be the most fun thing that you're ever going to do with your dog. When you're starting out with a dog in the beginning, you're going to want to use a long line that's going to keep the dog from running away so you're not chasing him and having a negative experience with the dog. Goofy, sit. Um, but once the dog is trained, we don't really need it on the dog. And some people have been commenting on the videos that, oh, why is your dog always on a long line? The reason I always put my dog on a long line when I show you these training videos is because I want you to put your dog on a long line until you're proofed. If you're doing this at a park or somewhere else and your dog runs away and gets out, hit by a car or something like that, I would feel terrible because I didn't encourage you to do it. So for the purpose of training, until the dog is proofed, which Goofy is proofed, but I'm going to just put him on a long line just so you yourself will put your dog on a long line. So. Let's talk about the action of sitting. And the action of sitting is quite simple. The action of sitting is telling my dog to sit, which means he puts his butt down and his feet, front feet stay erect and stay up. Very different from lying down. Some people will put their dog in a sit and the dog will lie down and they say that's good enough, but it's not. It's really important that your dog focus on the command that you're asking them to do. Once I'm finished showing you the advanced part portions of this, I'm going to bring Dwayne out and we're going to show you how to get those fundamentals down with the dog. So what I want you to see is when Goofy sits, he brings his back legs forward into the sit. Okay, and I'm going to bring the camera in kind of close for you to see this. Goofy, stay. Notice where his feet are now and notice when I say the word, watch what his back legs do. Goofy sits. Notice he brings his back legs towards his front legs and then sits down, which is very, very different from the way a lot of pets sit down, which means they sit from here backwards into the sit. And we might have Dwayne doing a little bit of both until we really perfect this, which is the phase we're working on now with his training. But the important thing here is we're going to lure this movement every time. Goofy, hop up on the, up on the box. Good. We're going to lure this movement every time. So if he's in a stand, right? that I'm going to put this over his head and by putting it over his head, he can't stand up here because it's over his head. It's tipping him kind of backwards. So that's the real simple way we get the dog to sit. We can do that when the dog is facing us. I'm going to take Goofy off the box for a second. Off, Goofy, come here. And when he's in front of me, naturally frontal pressure or we call spatial pressure here will make the dog back up. Now, if I go say, Goofy, come here, Goofy, come on, and I wait long enough, he should SIT. See, like that. Good boy. Because he's going to offer a behavior that we want, and he knows what that behavior is going to be. So dogs will offer sit a down or they'll start barking at you. We'll do another video on that real soon. But for right now, you're going to see at some point he's going to SIT. I'm not going to say the words. If I say sit, you should sit like that, right? Good. Yes. And I'm going to talk to you also about releasing the command so that you don't have your dog breaking the sit command because he's bored in the command. So for example, here, if I say goofy sit, he sits, I go, yes and I break it and I give him a reward. I can give him a pet, I can give him a toy, I can give him a treat, I can give him whatever, but I'm saving the treats because Duane Mater's coming out and I don't have that many treats with me today. So if I say, Goofy, sit, yes. That's the important part. Goofy, sit, yes. Now this time, if I say, Goofy, sit, 
That's a good sit. I'm not releasing him. The sit implies that he should stay. I don't want to say sit and stay. I want to say sit, good sit. I want to be able to go away from the dog, stand here casually, not expect the dog to break. And when I come back to him, release him with a tactile yes. And he's released. Part of doing that, as I've shown you in the Puppy Down series, is that I'm going to release the dog behind him. Right? So from here, for example, if I say Goofy, sit, good, yes. I'm going to release him behind him, which is going to keep him from thinking that he has to come to me to get the treat. The, the average dog is going to think, if I say Goofy, sit, that all the releases are going to be from here to Goofy, sit, to Goofy, come. Right? And that's the mistake people make in the sit. Don't do that. So the video here is more about the real philosophy of sit than it is the actual sit exercise. So if I say Goofy sit, he brings his back legs towards his front paws, he sits and he waits. I didn't say S-T-A-Y or anything like that. I simply told him to sit. Now if he thinks that reward is coming from me, he's going to come to me when I reach in my pocket. If I say sit, I should be able to take the treat out, show him the treat and he's not coming towards me, right? So here, he knows sometimes the treat is here and I'll give it to him there, or I'll say yes and I'll throw it behind him and he's released behind him. I talk a lot about the tactile release. That means if I say Goofy sit, he's gonna hold that sit until I say yes. Because a tactile release makes him think that there's two things that have to happen for him to be released, right? Goofy, come here. And once he's released, he's released, so he knows that he can be free to go. But let's take another really close look at something here, which is when I teach the sit, right, that I want to coach his butt to come into his uh, front, or his back legs to come forward. So let's do it again. Goofy stand. Watch here. Goofy sit. His back legs come forward, and this is more of a proper sit if you were going to do, a, you know, more of a, uh, like an AKC type obedience, whereas just average pets, you don't care. You'll see with Dwayne that he'll flop back a little bit, but we're going to work on tweaking that a little bit with Dwayne as well. So another thing I want to talk about in the sit, that is I'm going to tell my dog here, Goofy, sit. Good. And I'm going to put some pressure on him like this. In other words, Will he hold that sit? Which he does, right? Good boy. Good sit. I should be able to put immense pressure in here. And when I do this pressure, take your leash off of the live ring of the choke chain and put it on the dead ring because you don't want to choke your dog in this, but you do want to put some immense pressure here. Good sit. Look at how much pressure I can put on him. Sit. Good. This is going to make him really hold this sit and this looks aversive. But what it is, it's really making him commit to the action of sitting. If he's sitting, every dog will sit. But will the dog sit when I give him this sign? Right? When I give him this kind of a sign, like, hey, in theory, he should think he wants me to come to him. But that's not what I want. I want him to sit. Right? And he's not going to come to me because the action I said is S-I-T, not H-E-R-E. -E. He knows that he has to stay there. Good boy. Good sit. And I'll reinforce. Yeah, you're doing the right thing, Goofy. You're sitting. Good boy. Good boy. And when I release this and I go, yes, then he's going to come to me. Right? So that's real important to form clear communication with the dog so that he understands what it is I want him to do and not to assume what I want him to do, like by pulling him towards me. I don't want him to come to me, but that's teaching him even under somewhat of a confusion, like maybe somebody else saying free or yes or whatever. He has to hold that sit until I release him, right? And that's going to be an easy way for your dog to understand what it is you want. Remember something, if you like this video, Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel because we've got a lot more videos here that help you increase your life, uh, increase your relationship with your dog, make your relationship much more fun, make training more fun, and have a great time training your dog because that's what it's about. It's not about the obedience and the structure, it's about how much fun your dog has learning it because then he's going to keep doing it. He's going to have a great time doing it, right? Is that a good boy, Goofy? Yeah, that's a good boy, Goofy. So we're going to put you away and I'm going to take Dwayne out and we're going to show you the... Um, importance of forming this in a puppy and we're gonna have a lot of fun with that so i'm gonna get Dwayne right now